there. Welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson. That's Nathan Fox. Together with the founders of LSATdemon.com and the Thinking LSAT podcast. Here we have an email from Logan. Hey guys, I've been a Demon subscriber for about five months now. And while I don't say a lot in classes, I'm that guy with his camera off because I'm normally just getting home from work like a mess when art class, when classes start. Sorry, I've improved dramatically with your help. My first diagnostic test, going in completely cold, resulted in a 147. My last three practice tests have been 169, 171, and 170. I'm knocking on the door of my ideal target window now, just in time to take the August LSAT and apply for the fall 2022 school year. I want to ask you a question about letters of rec. I'm four years removed from undergrad. I graduated in 2017. And since then, I've been an army officer serving in Italy, Africa, and now back home in DC. I'm pretty certain I want my first letter to be from a national security professor I had in my senior year of college. He has an undergrad, master's, and PhD from Harvard, my top school, and a serious academic background, although not in law. I don't think that matters. We've kept in touch throughout my deployments and my time abroad, and I'm certain he'll write a compelling letter. I would like to interrupt right there. I think you're overthinking it. The fact that this person has a master's, who cares? They're a professor. Of course they have a master's. Of course they have a PhD. The fact that it comes from Harvard, I don't really think like most professors come from Harvard. Not that's not true. That's an exaggeration, but so many professors come from Harvard. It's a gigantic school. It tends to pump out tons of professors. You know, you have a special relationship with this Harvard professor, which is great, but everyone else has a Harvard professor writing them their letter of recommendation. So, you know, you're putting all these eggs in this one back in this one basket that you think that that like really matters. It doesn't. This person knows you. They're going to say complimentary things about you. That's kind of the end of the analysis. And that's great that they are connected to Harvard in some way, but yeah, it's, you're good. You're fine. Stop worrying about it. Yeah. My second letter is where I need more guidance. My thought as I write this email is to ask one of my bosses from the army. He's a special forces Lieutenant Colonel. I worked for in Italy and Africa. He has become a very close mentor of mine and can speak at length to my work ethic and character, but obviously not about my academic qualifications. That's fine. You're going to have a college professor write you one of your letters. Why would you want the other one to say the exact same thing? Now you have one professional. Great. Would that be a valuable thing to highlight in my letters of rec? Or should I instead seek a second letter from another college professor? Nope, you're fine. I'm confident that my resume can speak to my character through my work experience, but my fear is that I've been out of the academic game for so long that that aspect of my application will be lacking. Um, No, actually, because you've been out of it for so long, um, I don't think they're going to expect you to have two academic letters of recommendation. It would look weird if you did. It's like, yeah, they're so outdated. Like what? Um, This person's been out of undergrad for four years, but they still have two undergrad recommendations. What have they been doing with their lives since then? No, I think you absolutely, it it would be more, more appropriate to have one professional to go along with your one academic. Also, you're overthinking this whole thing. There's millions of applicants who have been out of undergrad for four years. That's not rare. And anyway, if you got good undergraduate grades and you, you say you're talking about law, uh, LSATs in the 170s, if you're going to show them a 170 something LSAT and you're going to show them your good undergraduate grades, then why would they doubt your academic promise? Yeah. Law school is totally different from undergrad anyway. So, Okay. He continues, as, I, as we like to say in the Army, B-L-U-F, which stands for bottom line up front. I don't actually follow that phrase. No, especially when he puts it at the end of his email. <laughs> if you put it at the top, then it would make sense. This is bottom line at the bottom. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we've already answered you, the question. We already did. So 
Anyways, he appreciates our thoughts. By the way, Ben, you said on the podcast or in a class a few weeks ago that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Made me smile. Mantras to live by. Yeah, I like that one actually, not only on the LSAT, but just all the time. I was saying it to my kids the other day. They had to get ready, dressed quickly for something. And I was like, slow, smooth, man. Just get your arm in that sleeve. It's, it's <laughs> like they're like rushing and your hand gets stuck, right? It's like, just get like focus and we'll be done and we'll be out of here. You know, um, I do think about that actually. I, when I'm rushing out the door sometimes, mm -hmm. um, the only thing I ever rush out the door for is a tea time, by the way. I, I live eight minutes from the golf course and I, I like, I don't like to arrive too early. I have, what am I going to do out there? I don't need yeah. to hang out for forever before the round. I'm going to be out there long enough anyway. So I do tend to kind of cut it close for my tea time. But that is sometimes I end up like, oh, shit, I got to go jump in the shower. I got to get dressed. I got to like, get, you know, I got to get moving. And I do frequently think about like, I have to take a breath mm -hmm. and go, hey, man, you're not going to get there faster by <laughs> rushing. You really do need to. It's like, yeah, one arm in <laughs> the other arm in. Put it, You're going to be fine. Breathe. Yep. You're going to make it. Cause if you rush, I mean, it's like you forget something and then have to come back. Yeah. It's the mistakes so, that cost you time. Right. It's not like, and it's not even like you're even going slow. It's just that you're deliberate and not. Yeah. It feels like you're trying to go slow, but you're not, you're just, yeah. Deliberate is a good word. Yeah. But slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah. It's not going to take that. It's not that hard. I've gotten ready for golf a million times in my life. I'm going to just get my shit together and cruise out. <laughs> and if I, if I try to push it, that's when I'm going to actually fuck something up and uh, end up missing that tea time. Thanks for writing in Logan. Um, it sounds like you have two great letters of recommendation, so you're good to go. If you have questions for us or some great hot, as Nathan wrote here, hot, LSAT news or law school admission news, email us at daily at lsatdemon.com. Thanks for listening.